I'm Ryan from ExtremeTerrain.com, and in this episode of Throttle Out, I'm going to give you my suggestions for the first five mods you should do to a brand new JL. So what we're going to talk about in this video is the first five mods that you might want to make to a brand new Jeep. The JL has a lot of improvements done to it over the previous generations right off the showroom floor and you can take one of these Jeeps out and have a lot of fun with it in stock trim. But the reason a lot of us buy Jeeps is because they are so much fun to modify, upgrade and improve. So again, we're going to go over the first five mods you might want to do to your JL and I'm also going to give you some suggestions on which particular parts. I like and the parts that we use in the build behind me. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that way you can check out more comparison videos, more information on the new JL, and some detailed videos on each of the parts we're going to talk about today. So let's get into this build. So the first couple of mods are probably the most obvious. That's going to be the lift kit and the wheels and tires. They are going to be two separate modifications, but of course they are very much related. The whole reason that you'll want to install a lift on your Jeep is to fit a bigger wheel and tire. So that's what we did here. We installed the Skyjacker two to two and a half inch lift kit and a set of 35 inch tires on some mammoth wheels on this Jeep. Now the Rubicon has a higher fender flare right out of the factory. You can easily fit a set of 35s on the Jeep without any type of lift kit. And Skyjacker says that with this lift kit, you can actually fit a set of 37 inch tires. But we built this Jeep for a very specific purpose. We wanna be able to go wheeling with it. And when we flexed it out with some bigger tires on it, we did have some clearance issues and some rubbing issues. So we decided to go with the 35s. Also, this is a first five mod video for your JL. So with 37, sometimes you need to make some additional improvements. Jeep did make the axles very, very strong on the new JL. They could probably stand up to 37s, but you might have to get into re-gearing or bigger brakes and some other things that can get a little bit on the pricier side. So again, for this video here, we stuck with a set of 35s on this two to two and a half inches of lift. And I think it gives the Jeep a really nice stance. It's very, very functional. As I said, we went out, we flexed this thing. Uh, we have contact with the bump stops before the tires make it into the body. It is going to be something that's gonna perform really well. The Skyjacker lift kit is going to be a very simple lift kit, but that also helps to keep the cost down, which is nice when you're just modding a brand new vehicle. It's one of the first lift kits that came to market for the JL. And as you can see, it works. It allows you to fit that bigger tire and go out and have even more fun with your Jeep. So the next part I want to talk about is right back here on the back of the Jeep and it's the Mopar tailgate reinforcement kit and tire carrier relocation kit. So when you install a big set of tires on the Jeep, if you want to have a full size spare, which is usually a good idea, you're gonna have to do something to modify the factory tire carrier. You're not going to physically have the room to mount a big tire and you're gonna have to do something to help with the weight of a much larger spare as well. What we have installed on this tire carrier now is actually a 37 inch tire and you can see from a size perspective and even from a weight perspective, we're taken care of by installing these two pieces. So what we have is the tailgate reinforcement kit that is going to spread the load of that tire out across the whole tailgate. It's a nice big strong aluminum piece that's going to help the tailgate from actually breaking down under the additional stress and weight of a big spare. And then that tire carrier relocation kit moves the factory tire carrier up a little bit so we have clearance between even this 37 inch tire and the cutout in the bumper. So those two pieces work really, really well together. You can install just the reinforcement kit without the relocation kit, but I wanted to install both of them, show you that even a 37 can be fit right on the tailgate if you install both of these pieces. The other reason to go with a tub mounted tire carrier option is the fact that you can open and close the tailgate with one hand in one motion. You don't have to first open a tire carrier and then open the tailgate like you would with a bumper mounted tire carrier. And if you're somebody who throws a lot of stuff in the cargo space of your Jeep, that's actually a very big benefit. And the other benefit is that this is going to be completely independent of the bumper. So if we ever decide to upgrade from the factory bumper, we can pick any bumper on the market and we're not tied to one that has a tire carrier. So a couple of different benefits there. The biggest one is that we can keep that full size spare on the back of the Jeep without causing any damage. So the last two mods we installed on this Jeep are a front bumper and some auxiliary lights. And for this build, we went with the barricade alloy series aluminum front bumper and a set of Raxium three inch square LED lights. So you want to install a bumper because a lot of these aftermarket bumpers have additional features that are really beneficial to have in an off-road situation. I like this bumper in particular because it is aluminum. So especially if you're going to be installing a winch on this bumper, you're able to keep the weight down and you're not going to have 
as much squat in the front of the Jeep. So some of the features that this bumper adds, uh, a little bit more protection over the factory front bumper. It has a winch plate built right into it. You don't have to buy any additional hardware, just bolt your winch right on there. It has some D-ring mounts. I prefer D-rings, especially during snatch strap recoveries versus a tow hook. The strap isn't going to come out of a D-ring. It can pop off of a tow hook. This bumper will accept a factory fog from a Sport, from a Sahara, or even from a Rubicon. But if you have the Rubicon or the Sahara with the optional steel front bumper, those fog lights mount a little bit differently, and you're not gonna be able to bolt those directly into this bumper. You'll have to get a little bit creative. And finally, it has this hoop up top here, which definitely adds something to the bumper aesthetically, but also adds a couple of light mount tabs, which of course we've utilized for these Raxium lights. I like lighting, I like auxiliary lighting, I like the way it looks on the Jeep, and I also like the fact that it's very, very functional. So these lights are gonna be great on those dark back roads when there's no oncoming traffic. If you're wheeling and the sun starts to go down or you're doing a recovery after dark, you can really never have too much light in that situation. So you're gonna be able to turn these on and have plenty of light. So those are my picks for the first five mods you could and should make to your new JL. Make sure you comment below and let me know what you think. There are a lot of parts out there, a lot of different options and a lot of different ways to build a Jeep. So let me know what you like, what you don't like, or what you're planning to do with your JL. Also, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you can check out review videos on all the new JL parts that are being added to the site every day.